nice set of slides. I want uh, people to actually try coding. Uh, if people have faced any difficulty in downloading Python, they can just go to this website called uh, online uh, gdb.com uh, slash online Python. Um, or just go to any Python uh, 3 uh, compiler online. Um, uh, so uh, so uh, ha has anyone faced any difficulties downloading Python and installing Python and faced any difficulties with that? So ideally you should be getting something like this, the ID if you have downloaded a shell like this. Um, so I, since no one has raised any issues, I'll uh, start off with uh, the Python session. Uh, uh, welcome everyone to the hands-on session uh, on Python. Um, so I've primarily taken um, the Python uh, resources from uh, these two websites. Uh, uh, I'll be highlighting the necessary uh, sublime text um, um, of, in the sublime file itself, if I want to highlight and stress upon any particular concept, so feel free to intervene. Uh, if you have, uh, if you're facing any doubts or problems, it'll be really basic and fundamentals. I assume nobody um, uh, uh, has started off with Python, so it's uh, not really going to talk about any data science and so on and so forth. It's going to stress on the really basics of why Python, what are the uh, uh, essential uh, 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 features of Python and how do we start playing around with Python. It's just plug and play, see a bunch of errors and then uh, 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 gain strength in Python uh, from this session uh, uh, to, to carry on with the more advanced tasks later on. Uh, so uh, first of all, um, Python, uh, first of all, why we are studying Python. So. Uh, it's it's super easy to code in Python. If you have, uh, uh, so print is just like print followed by uh, w whatever you would want to print. And the, the keywords, whatever you're using in Python are really fundamental there. Uh, you, uh, if you are, uh, if you have ever coded in Java, you need to like system dot out dot something to even print something. Uh, so in uh, Python, it's uh, really simple English-like words that you're using to code. Uh, and uh, in addition to that, for a more technical uh, understanding of why Python, uh, uh, it uh, combines the advantages of the procedural technique. Uh, a procedural technique in uh, simple words is like you have a problem and then you define it into sub-problems uh, in the form of functionalities and then uh, you uh, try to solve the problem. So you break down the main problem into sub-problems sub or procedures, and then you try to solve the problem. So you have seen this in uh, uh, C uh, uh, or C++, uh, and uh, so in uh, 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 so it not just restricts itself to procedural advantages, but it also combines the advantages of object-oriented programming, uh, which is provided in Java. So you, uh, in this session, I'm going to mostly stress upon the procedural techniques of uh, Python uh, and not really get into the object-oriented aspects of Python or the functional programming aspects of Python. But uh, if you want any more information, you can go to uh, uh, the second website and then uh, they have described it in like super detail, like how to go about things. Uh, but since it's just one hour, you really won't be able to understand uh, uh, everything about Python. And ideally, in any programming languages, uh, you should be uh, accustomed to uh, Googling things and then reading the blogs and then trying hands-on because uh, uh, it's a very wrong approach to learn everything about the programming language uh, and then uh, um, uh, and then uh, start implementing things. You have to start implementing from the very first uh, go itself. Uh, uh, so, uh, so it uh, Python uh, uh, combines the advantages of the procedural technique, the object-oriented programming technique, uh, and it's free. So uh, you can you can just go to the open source. Uh, 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 you can go to the GitHub repository and then play around with the Python uh, source code. So it's super free, and then. Uh, that makes it really easy for the developers to build on applications using Python. Um, so uh, we are using Python 3 uh, for this uh, workshop. Uh, uh, Python 2.7, uh, uh, there might be a few syntactical uh, changes. 
but python 3 uh, uh, since it's uh, given maintenance by the developers uh, i'm sticking up uh, i'm i'm using uh, uh, python 3 for the workshop uh, but you can flip back and forth uh, uh, of uh, from python 2 to python 3 it should not be much of a difficulty um, so let's just uh, start with the very first uh, program uh, uh, so, uh, welcome to the work, IBSC workshop uh, on GitHub and Python. So, if you uh, just uh, observe, uh, it's really simple English-like uh, understanding of Python. You just type print, which is a keyword in Python. So, if you see the keywords are generally get this distinctive color on this website, it might not be the case on all uh, uh, on, on all your IDLEs. Uh, uh, you, you might not be getting the same color. Okay, you're getting a different color. Here you're getting the purple color. So this is a keyword in Python followed by uh, what you want to print. So I'm just saying welcome to the IBSC workshop. Uh, uh, welcome folks. Uh, uh, let's learn. Let's learn Python and Git. Let's learn Python and Git. So I'll just run this. Let's see what what will come. Okay, welcome folks. Let's learn Python and get it. It's as simple as that. So you, you know like how to print statements in Python. So that's a progress. So now uh, I explained to you what are keywords. Keywords are these uh, uh, words that have special meanings in Python. So they can, uh, in this particular statement, um, you can see that print is a keyword. It has a special functionality. So all these are reserved words in Python. You can also, uh, there can also be uh, other reserved words like uh, true and false in uh, uh, in Python. So you can say like true is a reserved word, which is taking a different color, and then maybe false is a reserved word. Um, so uh, uh, so these are these carry uh, special meanings, just like any other language in uh, Python. Nothing uh, uh, special about it. Uh, but uh, having said that. Uh, how do you name your variables and functions? Of course, they should not be keywords, uh, but in addition to that, uh, they should be a combination of uh, letters, which can be the small letters or the big letters combination, and it can also include numbers and underscores. It cannot include anything apart from these punctuation, uh, apart from uh, these particular symbols. It's just the letters, the, num the digits, and uh, uh, the underscores. Uh, and it cannot start with a digit. So if I try to say, if I try to type, um, uh, say, uh, uh, three followed by IBSC, and then if I say uh, this one, then it should it gives an error. It's an invalid syntax. So so it cannot uh, start with a digit, uh, or maybe like if you equals to three or something like that, uh, still it gives me an error. It's an invalid syntactical error. So there is no specific length on the number of digits uh, you can uh, you need, uh, or the uh, the length of the uh, identifier. It can be of any length. Uh, and uh, the keywords cannot be used as uh, identifiers, as stated uh, before. Um, uh, so I'll just uh, uh, to quickly uh, get you started with uh, coding. Uh, to uh, uh, to quickly get started with uh, the fun writing functions and for loops and so on and so forth. I'll quickly introduce you to uh, what is known as uh, simple building blocks. The first is a statement. So there are different statements in Python. The first is an assignment statement. So you can see that there's an identifier. Uh, which is uh, named by A, and there is an assignment operator, which is uh, specified by is equal to, and there is one that is being assigned to A. So this is an assignment expression. So you can also have other types of expressions, which is uh, like a, uh, uh, other types of uh, statements, which can be like a multi-line statement, which is indicated by a slash, uh, uh, which is indicated by a slash like this, and then, um, uh, you can have uh, uh, different uh, types of statements. Even the multi-line statement can be, if you don't want a slash, you can just uh, give a uh, brackets out there. Uh, so, I mean, uh, all these things can be like super trivial, but uh, uh, just pay attention because uh, this is how you build the basic blocks of Python. It always comes from uh, statements to uh, uh, basic uh, uh, blocks like functions, and then you build your complete uh, file. That's the set of functions which forms a module, and then you build your project. 
Um, so uh, always pay attention to the basics type of statements. It can be an assignment statement or in the future you'll see if and else or a for while loop and then you use to construct functions and then functions build a module which is stored in a file and the set of files will form a project. So uh, the basic fundamental blocks are always the statements in any programming languages. Uh, so that's the reason why we are learning how to write statements. Uh, so you learned uh, how to write an assignment statement. So if you see like, hey, I want to assign what is the value of, uh, 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 so if I want to check what is the value of A, I'll just print the value of A and check it. Like how, what's the value of A? Okay, A is one as expected. Now um, let's go to a more um, um, advanced uh, uh, technique, like uh, concept of uh, how do you build like for loops or, uh, or, or before even for loops, let's start with uh, how do you uh, write comments. So if you observe here, I've written this statement of uh, statements giving functions. So this particular line uh, is called a comment. You uh, like a comment is generally used in your programming technique for better documentation to understand what you um, uh, what you are uh, conveying, uh, what you are doing in the program. So here I am just, uh, you can say, you can write a comment saying, assigning the value of A to 1. So that's what you're doing here. You're assigning the value of A to 1. That's what you're doing. And then you're writing that in your comment. Um, and then you're printing the value. Uh, you can also write multi-line comments, uh, which is span like, uh, uh, which you can type in, uh, uh, multi-line comments so if the comment spans over multi-line then you can just like assigning the value of a to one to make uh, the ibsc workshop uh, um, to to uh, make the ibsc folks uh, understand ibsc folks understand what is happening uh, understand python uh, so that's the reason you need multi-line comments so that's that's all about comments. So you, I mean, uh, after that, uh, uh, we we have already discussed what are variables. So if you see like uh, uh, here, your a is a variable. Variable uh, 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 is uh, any in any other programming languages. It just takes the uh, it just stores the particular value. So here your uh, a is storing the value of one. And uh, the name what you give to uh, variables is what we have discussed before, uh, 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 like uh, uh, which applies to any identifier. Variable is uh, just like a variable or a function. Uh, uh, it takes in the same rules as any identifier uh, of uh, uh, containing digits and numbers and underscores and uh, not uh, beginning with a digit. The same rules uh, which applies to identifier applies to the variable as well. Um, so um, uh, so here A is a variable. So I, I really don't want to take a different example. It's too trivial. Uh, you can type in different, uh, 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 different uh, you can also type in, uh, pass in multiple arguments to your print statement. Like you can take, uh, uh, let's just greet the IBSC folks. Let's just say, uh, welcome. Uh, and then I'll say greet followed by, Welcome, IBSC folks. So now it'll just print welcome, IBSC folks. So there's greet, which is the first argument to your print statement. And then there's a second argument that's in the print statement uh, called IBSC folks. And both are like combined and then they're printed. Uh, uh, so I'll just get into the details of what this exactly means. So this is actually a function. This is called a function, but you don't need to really worry uh, uh, just uh, worry about the technicalities. Just have fun looking at these uh, uh, keywords and these uh, variables and how values are being assigned, how comments are being written, and just focusing on the first aspect of statements alone here. We're not getting into how to build a project. It all starts off with the very basic things. Um, so just get comfortable. Uh, and then, uh, so you'll be wondering if you're, the folks who work with uh, C or uh, Java will be wondering, hey, I'm not really assigning what type is greet or what type is, uh, what data type is it? Is it uh, an integer? Is it, uh, is uh, greet an integer? Is it, uh, 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 is it a string? Uh, so 
uh, so you uh, how do we specify that so that's the beauty of python that's the fun of python you don't need to know what exactly greet is it automatically takes care of the data types. You don't need to specifically write down what the data type of greet is. Uh, so it's a string. So if you can check the type of greet. So if you go to greet uh, and then uh, just uh, uh, run it or just print it, uh, let's just uh, go here. Oh yeah, it's a class of string type. So that's what it prints. It automatically takes care of what the data type is. You don't need to specifically um, write down um, uh, or, or specify what the data type is. Uh, although, like, I, I just want to specify there are like string data types, the integer data types, the complex uh, data types, and then there are float data types. For the people who are worrying, what is this complex data types? Uh, uh, so, I mean, everyone's aware of what's a floating data type. So, floating data type, this is a string data type. This is a string data type. Uh, so you can also give like, um, okay, let's just uh, take like temperate. What's the temperature today? Uh, it was pretty cold yesterday in Bangalore. I think temperature today might be around 20.5 degrees Celsius. I don't know. Um, I haven't checked. Uh, so uh, that's the temperature. And then so if you check the temperature type by doing the same functionality, you should be getting a, fl a flow data type. Um, uh, so you should be getting a flow data type. All right, so uh, the same thing applies to complex data type. So complex data type can be like, hey, I want a vector. I want like a vector of, uh, um, say, um, a temperature and a complex data type when uh, the first argument and the second argument has to be like maybe, um, uh, I don't know, like or the, the integer aspect of the temperature and the floating point of the temperature. So this is like a complex data type. So you, you specify with a J out there. Um, so, I mean, uh, all these things are like, how do you, uh, uh, I mean, in I, more, most of the projects I worked on complex data types, at least in computer science, or uh, you rarely use complex data types, I haven't really used much of it. Uh, it's mainly uh, integer strings and floats. Now let's get on to lists. What are lists all about? Lists are an ordered sequence of items. So what are these items? Items you've seen, it can be your strings, it can be your floats, it can be your integers, right? So now a list is an ordered sequence of elements. It's an ordered sequence of elements. Now, how do you define a list? So you can create a list of, um, say, your. Um, I want to create a list of uh, uh, a bunch of uh, items that I like, a bunch of fruits I like. So it can be like I really like mangoes, I really like um, apples, and then I really like. Some, uh, I mean, you can also have mixed data types. It need not be only strings. It can also be floats. It can be like, I want a list of fruits uh, and uh, the, um, uh, the, the quantity of, uh, uh, you, I want a, a list of fruits and maybe uh, te temperatures, I don't know. It's just uh, nothing uh, coherent, but uh, just for the, uh, didactic uh, 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 reason, I'm just uh, using it here. So 20.5 or maybe like 17 or whatever. Um, and then you print your list. It should just print the list. Uh, oh, greet is not specify. Oh yeah, I'm printing this before this. So let's just remove the print. Uh, all right. Oh yeah, you just got the list. You got your list. So you got the list of fruits and temperatures. So uh, I assume that uh, uh, list is just in one, uh, one line, it's just an ordered sequence of items. And the fun part about list is you can go to that particular list and actually access uh, a particular element in that list. So if I want to access the first element in the list, so note that the index starts from zero. 
if I want to access the first element of the list, then I need to type the name of the list followed by the in uh, followed by the index of the list. And the index always starts from zero. So here it's like zero, one, two, and three. So that's how it starts. So if I want the second item in the list, I'll just go and do <coughs> fruit stem of one. Yeah. And then it prints apples. <clears throat> the fun part about um, uh, lists are they are mutable. So this is an interesting uh, property. You can change the lists once it's defined. So if you go to uh, uh, items, uh, uh, the, the fruit stem list, and then go to the first item, and then they say, I'm, I really don't like mango. I like uh, I like uh, jackfruit. I really like jackfruit. So then, oh, I have not printed it. So now let's just print the list. Print this list. See what happens. All right. So now the list is changed. Initially, you defined it as mango apples and so on and so forth. Now it's jackfruit apples and so on and so forth. So it's mutable. That's the fun part about lists. So if you want to access a range of elements in the list, I can then go and say, hey, I want to list out all the elements starting from the second element onwards, uh, uh, all the elements starting from the second element. So I type the starting index and then uh, and then if it wants to, and if you want to go on all the way, you would just leave a blank. And then if you want to restrict it to say just the second and the third element, you uh, you just do like uh, second and the third element. So you just do one to two or one to three. So let's see what will happen. Right. So it's like the initial index of the first element and the final index of the uh, last element plus one. So it, it ideally goes from the starting index, starting index, all the way till the ending index minus one. So it uh, so it's like from one to two. So these set of elements are printed. If you uh, if you just observe in the output. So what if I don't want a mutable uh, uh, mutable set of lists? What if I uh, want an immutable set of lists? So, uh, an immutable set of lists like hey the list of cities in my uh, 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 the list of cities uh, don't really change that often. Why? Why should I uh, make it like mutable set of lists? So I want like the set of cities in India. Uh, I'll just take two things like Chennai and Bangalore, <coughs> right? <coughs> so then I define what is known as a tuple. So this is a tuple. Tuple is an order sequence of items, but it's immutable. You can still go and print your items. You can still go and print your items. So it'll print Bangalore. So that's the fun part about tuples. It's immutable. Um, <clears throat> so I really don't want to get into strings. You have seen enough of strings. All these are strings. Um, strings as well are immutable. So if I want to define a string, say, Fruit is a string, say jackfruit. So you know you you must have been comfortable by now how to type your string. This is as well immutable. You can't re uh, if you want to access this, say the first character of jackfruit. Then I just print jackfruit. So you can see a J. Um, <clears throat> so that's the first letter of jackfruit. <clears throat> but if you plan to change the first letter of jackfruit. Say I want to change the first letter of jackfruit to say C or some other letter. Then it should give an error. Yes, because string is immutable. That's the reason it's giving you an error. So we have understood what strings are. We have understood um, what a set is. OK, we, we have not understood what a set is. We have understood what a tuple is. We have understood what a list is. So let's just come down to what a set is. Question in the chat. OK, OK, OK. I'll just see. 
पवन यू कैन कंटिन्यू लेट द क्वेश्चंस बी देयर ड्यूरिंग ड्यूरिंग योर क्यू एंड ए लुक एट द ऑल द कन्वर्सेशन एंड आंसर इट वन बाय वन ऑल राइट ऑल राइट ऑल राइट ऑल राइट um so uh, right so what a, what is a uh, what is a set so set is a, and it's not ordered that's the first thing and if you type duplicates it will be removed duplicates will be removed and it's uh, so set is like actually you can uh, uh, just make the city as well a, a set like it's not really a tube like a set of uh, un, uh, you can have some uh, collisions i rarely see a collision so generally a set is like a, 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 a what's a set of uh, uh, objects or you really see a duplicate there a set of cities can also be taken as a a, a set uh, it need not be a tuple uh, uh, if you have a set that has no duplicates just define it as a set uh, so you can define a set of uh, uh, numbers as uh, that's 1 2 2 3 4 it's great it has duplicates but if you print a and see how it prints now you can see all the duplicates are gone 1 2 3 4 4 there are no duplicates too even though i assigned it to a there is no duplicate and there is no order as well i mean here you see like uh, just because i'm typing it this way you see you you tend to think that there's an order but there's actually no real order uh, you can just uh, uh, yeah there's no order as well you defined as 42212 2, but it's stored as 124 so say so, so if you uh, so that's the uh, that's why you use sets in python uh, you see how these things are really simple i mean in c++ as well uh, uh, you can um, uh, i mean i'm not sure uh, they have lists but uh, Uh, such easy to write operations you know like just with these kind of um, uh, curly braces and direct assignment it's so easy to write so fun to write that's why we use python it's easy it's easy to type uh, it's english like and it's easy to uh, write uh, uh, just kick start with your programming endeavor without much of uh, learning technicalities um so next is what is dictionary suppose i want to understand uh, suppose uh, dictionary is all about key value pair so you want to organize your elements in key value pair then you use a dictionary so what a dictionary does is uh, suppose take the example of uh, uh, the city and the temperature all right um, so this is a dictionary and say bangalore it was pretty cold yesterday so i think it might be around 19 degrees celsius and i don't know about um, other hot places i think even it was raining in chennai um not sure i think let's just give bombay or i don't know maybe about um 25 degrees celsius okay so now if you print um oh yeah you see this this is how it's organized hey in mumbai the temperature was 25 in Bom- bangalore it was 19 and if i want to access what's the value stored in bangalore i'll just type the the dictionary followed by the key value and then it has to just display the value for me so that's 19 degrees so it's so fun like as long as i know the key i can get the value it's as simple as that that's why you need dictionaries key value pair storage so now uh, if you observe uh, uh if you uh, just observe a couple of operations in python okay slightly a deviation from so you just finished a bunch of uh storages like lists and python uh, like lists and dictionaries and sets and so on and so forth uh let's just start off with uh, type conversions so in c if you observe there was an implicit uh, if people have studied c uh, uh, or uh, been so used to data types so they know that um, this one, one is uh, an integer and a takes an integer value uh, or if and then 1.5 is assigned b uh, takes in a floating value or a decimal value um 
Now, if I write C is equal to A plus B, what type is it? What type is C and what is the value of C? So this is the value of C. This is the type of C. So what is the type of C? It's a floating type. So if you carefully observe here, I specified an integer value to A and I specified a floating value to B, but C automatically took a floating value. So that is called an implicit type conversion. Now let's just discuss what is known as an explicit type conversion. Suppose I want to add um, say a string. Suppose if A was a string and B was an integer. Now I want to print what the value of C is. So I really am expecting two to be the output. But here there's an error. I really cannot convert the integer object to string implicitly. So what it means is if you want to convert from one data type to another, say from string to integer, you have to explicitly do that by stating the data type. So I explicitly state what data type it is, what data type I'm converting my string to, and then you force that conversion explicitly and then do the conversion. So now you can observe, hey, my output is C2 and it's of type integer. So that's called an explicit type conversion. So, uh, I mean, these are just the conceptual uh, elements, uh, not much of from a programming perspective. I don't really want to make it programming intensive because I just want to focus on statements and functions and modules, but not really get down into building huge projects or running your uh, uh, data science intensive projects because they all come down to really basic things, just writing a bunch of statements. Now, uh, how do you get inputs from um, uh, from the user? So I want to I want to uh, uh, get the name of uh, uh, of some someone. Okay, let's just take a name of uh, uh, some person who's uh, right here. Uh, or let's just take Prahalad for example. So hey, um, uh, I just want to. Please enter your name. All right. So it's just like input is a keyword. You know what a keyword is as of now. If people don't know, just take it as the one that comes in red in a different color. But keyword is the, the ones that have like these special meanings attached to it. Uh, so you are asking the user to en enter your name. Please enter your name. And then let's just print whatever he enters. Let's just see. Oh yeah, so it gives a prompt. It's it's asking me, please enter your name. So I'll type it's Prahalad. Oh yeah, it prints. It gets whatever you have printed, whatever you have typed, and then it prints it. It's as simple as that. You get the input, and then you're displaying whatever has been inputted. Um, so whenever you write like heavy uh, data intensive task, you need to get a bunch of inputs from the user, right? So you use a simple input command. It's as simple as that. Now, what kind of operations are allowed? So this is, uh, again, uh, you there's an assignment operation here. You saw that there's an assignment operator here, equal to. So this is what an assignment operator does. And then you saw what a, um, what an addition operator does. So what an addition operator can do uh, is uh, it adds one and two, and then a value should be uh, three right now. So how about I uh, throw in a bunch of uh, simple arithmetic operations like remainder? Hey, what's the remainder when I divide uh, when I divide one and uh, one by two? So things like these simple arithmetic operations, which is pretty standard across all programming languages. Um, so uh, what? So what is the? So now you have dealt with uh, simple uh, statements, right? So now let's just come down to 
building blocks like there are three building blocks one is your uh, if and else one is the loops which uh, and another one is uh, how do you uh, use your break continue and pass so if and else is pretty i mean i won't write it here uh, on on the right you just observe in your left um, so if and else has this very nice structure uh, if you just see here it's just the if keyword followed by a condition if the condition holds true i execute a bunch of statements or else i'll check for another condition and then if that's true, I'm going to execute another set of statements. Uh, you can have a series of elif, elif, elif. If none of it holds true, if or else, I'm going to execute a certain set of statements. So it can be like, hey, my score in the Python workshop was 10 marks out of 100. Or maybe like 100, you go, so, okay, let's just be optimistic. You get 100 on 100. Now, if the score is above 70, then I'm going to say excellent. Or else, if the score is lesser than 70, or else, okay, let's just, uh, or else, Let's just keep it simple or else I'm going to print not excellent. You need to improve. Need to scope for improvement. Scope for improvement. All right. Now let's see how the program behaves. Um, let's just run it. Okay, so I mean, there's a syntactical error because you need to give a colon after the condition. So even in the else and in the if statement, so the colon has to be inserted. Right, they're excellent. All the students of this IBSE workshop are excellent. They're scoring 100 on 100. And since the score is above 70 marks, they're getting excellent scores and feedbacks. So that's all that's there for if and else. It's so simple, right? If you uh, uh, look in C also in Java also, the construct of if and else is pretty much similar. But uh, what makes Python really uh, fun is uh, the simplicity that you don't really need these. Um, uh, you can just uh, use your dollar. There are no like these brackets. It's just about indentation. If you observe, I'm not putting any brackets here. I can write, hey, print. Um, no need of indentation. You, you, uh, we all like Python. We all like Python because it's so simple. Because it's simple. So there's you. You just observe, right? And see, you have to put a parenthesis like this. So there's no parenthesis here. It's just indentation. I put an indentation here. One tab. Generally, people like uh, uh, put a one tab indentation. Uh, or a two tab indentation depends on your um, your style, but all the indentation comes under that scope. So the if uh, the if uh, is uh, having one scope, the if and else. So within if there are two statements, there are these two statements. Within else, there's one statement. So all the lines of a particular indentation are in that particular block in that particular uh, 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 in that particular scope so uh, the module of if and else is within the outer scope so within if you have your print statements and within else you have uh, another print statement uh, so if you just run this hey there are two statements you don't you don't even need uh, 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 you don't need a curly braces to specify the block of if you just have two statements just by indentation. So it's simple. Python, it makes these things really simple um, as far as syntax, as far as the usage of what kind of statements you're writing. So we are done with if and else. What about loops? So I'll just take one loop. I'll just take the for loop. 
the while loop is uh, again pretty similar. So the for loop is uh, it iterates over a sequence. So it accesses one element at a time, uh, and then it uh, and then uh, it, it and then it uh, you you can then execute whatever you want to inside the loop. So it's the ideal syntax is for followed by the iterator, and the iterator iterates over the list. And then you do whatever you want with that particular iterator. Uh, I mean, uh, or you can just take instead of iterator if that confuses you, uh, some particular element in that list. So uh, the here the, the if you take a list of words, suppose I take a list of words. Now then I want to iterate over. Or uh, I mean, list is a keyword, so be very careful not to use keywords. So you can just take uh, what we are, and yes, what we are, and then yes. So what it does is it takes a list, and then it takes a particular element that iterates over the list. The iterates is first you get the you, uh, first uh, word takes v, then word takes r, and then word takes awesome. And then it prints inside the for loop. Notice the indentation is what makes things come inside the for loop. So if I run this, let's see what happens. Oh yeah, we are awesome. We are learning Python well. So let's see what happens there. Oh yeah, we are learning Python very well. Or Python pretty well. So yeah, so that's what loops are all about. For loops and while loops is uh, instead of uh, an iteration, while loop takes in a test condition. As long as the test condition holds true, then your particular body set of statements will be executed. Um, so, uh, with the benefit of uh, just 10 minutes remaining, I want to really get into how to write a while loop uh, or how to uh, write a break and continue. I mean, a break and continue, I'll just uh, insert your, here itself. So, break, what it does is break breaks the flow of for loop. So, what is the flow of for loop? Uh, the first word is uh, uh, initialized to word in the list, and then something happens inside the for loop. So suppose I don't, I, I, I'll be like, um, I'll just say we are learning, uh, uh, we are, we, I mean, we know Python, we know Python, suppose. So, so then, so if the word, so what else if the word equals no. Or let's just uh, keep it even simple. Let's not even include the if statement. So it's something like what we know. So how much of Python do you know? Do you know like 10% of Python? Do you know like 50% of Python, 100% of Python? What we know, okay? So say no percentage, okay? So if the no percentage is equal to equal to 100, then hey, what are you doing in this workshop? Get the hell out of this workshop. So I break. So if I want to discontinue, um, if I want to break the flow of uh, the, uh, the for loop, then I use what is known as break statement. So if you just observe here, I'll just uh, write 10 and then I'll write 100 and then I'll write 50. So let's see what prints. Okay. Oh yeah. So if you see the no percentage will first come down to 10. It'll check if 10 is equal to 100. 10 is not equal to 100. So it'll print 10. So now 100 comes. 100 comes and says like, hey, I know, I know everything in Python. So then I'll just say, then please leave the workshop because you know everything in Python. So that's why I break from this loop. Uh, say like student one knows 10%, student two knows 100%, student three knows 50%. So 
So now if I know 100%, if a student knows 100%, then he can just leave. So that's what break does. What does continue do? Continue just comes, but continue says like, um, so what break does is it breaks away the flow of uh, operation uh, from the for loop. So continue will again come back to the uh, uh, come back to the loop condition. So I think uh, continue can be better explained in um, through a while loop. Um, so I think in continue, if you just take in um, instead of having a list. If I just take, say, an iterator value of, say, uh, zero or some iterator, let's just call it i, um, and then I'll say that, uh, or, or say marks, let's say marks. And then marks is lesser than, lesser than, uh, say, 50. Okay, or let's just say 49. Let's just say his marks is 49. If it's lesser than 50, then I'm going to keep on keep on making keep on executing these set of statements inside the loop. So if marks is lesser than 50, then the student needs to learn Python more. He needs to learn Python more. And then um, so then I, once he has learned, so once you have learned Python, I learned Python, I, I took the class, I took Python class. And then his marks will then increase by one. Okay, his marks will increase by one. And then, um, yeah, and then, uh, and then the condition is again checked. So, if the marks is uh, at any point in time, or if the marks becomes lesser than 50, okay, let's just say while true, while true. This is always happening. So let's just uh, understand what's happening here. So initially my marks is 49 in Python course. I I take a Python course. I want to learn Python more. I took the Python class. I my marks increased by one. And uh, since the passing mark was fifty, I check if my marks is lesser than fifty. Since it's lesser than fifty, I want to again. I'll I'll be forced to again take the Python class and learn more and then increase my marks. So this iteration keeps on happening until it becomes greater than 50. So ideally in this case, if you start with 48, uh, let's see how many times you'll be taking the Python class. <clears throat> oh, that's a lot of times. <clears throat> okay, let's just stop. Let's understand what's happening. You come to, you initially in 48, you took the Python class, you your marks improved by one, and then and then you can anyone point out what the error is here? Can any student point out or write in the chat window what the error is here? I mean, why is not why are we not able to break away from the loop? Can anyone explain why are we running into this infinite loop? So continue ideally what it does is it comes back to the while condition. Uh, Pavan. Yeah. Like uh, there is no statement that comes out of the loop, right? There is no break. Even if the mark is greater than 50, it again goes to while true. It doesn't go to if loop, but it still goes to while true. Right. So that's the reason. I mean, anyone from uh, uh, did. Uh, I mean, I want someone from the chat window to be participator. Uh, uh, anyone who is uh, registered for this uh, Anvit or Shriya? Gautam has answered. Oh, Gautam has answered. Okay, okay, okay. So, right. So, the thing is, uh, that's the fun part about uh, continue and 
and that's why you are trying to so now you're able to understand how to even fix the errors right so you understand that there's there was no way to come out of the loop you're just stuck in this part of the loop and so so continue what it does is it just comes back to the true statement keeps on going here again comes back keeps on going so there's no way you can really come out of that loop so um and ideally like how do you come out of the loop and, the, and that's more into the logic aspect but i just want to emphasize that what continue does continue says is hey if my condition is uh, 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 false so suppose if the marks was greater then i'll just break it so this will ideally should let's see how many times it'll print that's it i just took python courses twice once when my marks was 48 and once my marks was 49 and once my marks became 50 i was uh, i need not uh, take uh, any more python courses it's done i just I was asked to exit the python course so that's what break and continue does now suppose i don't want to have anything um, in the uh, in the body of the pi, uh, body of the while loop or the for loop or the if statements so if you just type in a a, a body that is free of uh, any statements it, it gives you an error yeah so there is an end of file passing error so if you want an empty body what python suggests is a statement is a keyword known as pass so what pass does is i mean here you're not incrementing, so it just caught up here. But uh, what pass does is it doesn't give you a syntactical error of def uh, so you can go ahead and define these empty blocks of statements. So that's the that's what break, continue, pass, and loops and if else statement is all about. So now you got some exposure to how to write statements, these fundamental blocks. And uh, let's just uh, wrap up with uh, functions. Uh, and then for the more advanced concepts, I'll just, uh, I mean, I'll just take five more minutes. I, I know like uh, it was just assigned 50 minutes. Uh, so I'll just wrap up with how do you write functions because that's really important. Lambda functions, what objects, what dynamic binding. There are so many advanced concepts which you can go to this website. I want the students uh, uh, or else I'll just uh, uh, type it out in the chat window. You can just go to a bunch of websites. There's so many YouTube videos, but uh, I really like this. This is like you can wrap it up in like the three to four hours for more advanced concepts. Um, um, but I'll just wrap this uh, session with how do you define functions? So why do you need functions? Functions are all like chunks of modules, right? You want to uh, break your program into sub uh, into sub parts and then attack these sub problems. Uh, and then that's the whole point of defining functions. Uh, so if I want to uh, say um, um, like learn Python course, uh, uh, that's uh, the so the first you will have to learn what statements are, what functions are, and what modules are. So similarly, any big task you'll break it down into smaller statements. Um, so how do you define statements in Python? So you use a def keyword followed by a function name followed by a bunch of arguments and then the body of the function. So now let's just take an example here. So let's just say I want to greet you folks. Uh, I want to uh, I want to say like uh, I want to give a greeting message uh, to someone, some person, and then I want to give a message to them. So I'll come back to what these particular statements are. Uh, why am I defining is equal to and what are these uh, whole bunch of operations? And then I'll just uh, print the name along with the message, along with the message. And then I'll call this particular, I'll greet you folks. I'll say, hey, uh, uh, part is IBSC participants. Okay, IBSC folks. Yeah. I'll just make it like this. Hello, IBSC folks. That's what I want. I, I want you to. I want to greet you folks by. So I'll just um, run this. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Hello, IBSC folks. So if you just observe here, there, like I just uh, ran the code before even explaining these subtleties because 
Uh, I just want to initially confuse you folks and then recorrect it. So, I mean, what is this? We are calling the function greet, but if you just observe here, I am passing just one argument wherein I have defined two arguments here. And what is this is equal to. So what this does is is equal to says that my message is an optional argument. Message is an optional argument. So I can either pass message or I can leave message. So if I leave message, it'll take the default value of hello. And if I pass something, then it'll take a different value. So I want to say pass a message of say IBSC folks. Uh, hi, I don't want a hello. I don't like a hello. I want like more informal. Oh, what's up? IBSC folks or an informal message. And then yes, what's up IBSC folks? So now message is an optional argument, but now you're sending that parameter as well. So whatever is the default value will be substituted with the this particular message. Um, so that's what Python does. Python provides these uh, functionalities, uh, provides an option to specify these optional arguments. So notice the indentation. Whatever you have defined inside the function comes inside the indentation block of your def block. Follow, uh, now, is the order really important? Um, nope, order is not really important uh, if you specify the names of the arguments. Say I want to give like um, sub or maybe what's up IBSC folks and then I want to give you this. Now, if I specify the specific name uh, of the argument, then I don't need to worry about the order in which I specify. So I just see here, I've jumbled it up. The message is coming first, the name is coming second. Let's see what this prints. Yes, it prints what's up IBSC folks. So uh, that's what functions is all about. You have a def, you have a name, you have a bunch of arguments, and then you have the logic. You can use your print statements, assignment statements, you can use your for, while, your um, if statements, and uh, your continue, break, pass, whatever you want to do with uh, all these uh, uh, if and for uh, uh, statements. So it's just a bunch of statements here. It's just function is just a bunch of uh, uh, these uh, statements here. And then you call the function by supplying the arguments. So that's what Python is all about. It's just Today, what you learned is how do you write your statements and functions? Now, how do you, uh, now module is just a bunch of functions and module can also contain class and objects, which I'm not really stressing on here, which is more like the object oriented part of Python, but it's just all comes down to a bunch of simple statements and functions that builds your files, which are, you can just take it as files instead of modules. And then a bunch of files comprise of your project. Um, so I think I'll uh, hand over to the next speaker. Um, Python session is uh, done. I'll take up some questions now. Um, okay, uh, participants, okay. Our lists always preferred over tuples. So there's a hard, there's nothing like hard and fast rule of always. It's always about what application you're working on. So if you have a list that you need to change every time, if you have, if you want an ordered set of elements that you need to change every time, then you use a list. Um, so suppose, uh, 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 suppose for example, um, marks of the student. Marks of the student, marks of the students in my Python course. I don't want to make it a tuple. I want to make it a list. I want to make it a list mainly because uh, the students will come and ask doubts and then ask for recorrection. And then I need to go and update uh, the marks in these, uh, my list. I can't really make it like, um, uh, 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 immutable sort of a thing. Uh, so I would uh, prefer a list uh, in that case. I don't really, I don't, I will not be uh, getting into an in, a, a immutable uh, sort of a list. 
uh, that's a tuple. Uh, so it depends on the application. Like in any programming languages, it's never a hard and fast tool of what you should, what you will always use and what you should, uh, what you should avoid. It's always like, what do you require? What is your requirement? Is it the marks of the students? Is, is it something that you'll be updating every now and then? Um, then you use a, 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 a what is known as a list. Um, so let's just take some more questions. While true happens, so yeah, Gautam got that right. Uh, I think uh, that's it. Uh, that those are the set of questions uh, from the Python workshop. Uh, and uh, thank you, folks. Thank you uh, for joining. And uh, I think if you want some resources, you can just go and uh, just type it in the chat window. Just uh, uh, I think you can just go to the second one. Second one's good. Uh, second one, you can go. Uh, there's a whole bunch of YouTube videos. Um, so I think I would just like to wrap up the session by saying that uh, uh, always try hands-on sessions with uh, uh, in in programming. Try hands-on uh, when as far as uh, programming is concerned. Uh, as far as uh, programming is concerned, uh, because you need to make mistakes. Make mistakes. See the errors. Uh, uh, and then see some syntax errors. Okay, just uh, um, get rid of these uh, uh, of these square brackets and see what happens. Oh my God, I've got a syntax error. Oh, that's hands-on. I've made some mistakes. Now I'm going to go rectify. Oh, why why this mistake is coming? It's because of this square brackets. Now I'm going to fix it myself. Now that's what you should do with any programming uh, language or any application. You're going to go. Try hands on, go to Python docs. There are so many Python documentations, uh, Python 3 documentations that you should uh, just uh, go and have a look, um, which is all out there. Uh, installing, distributing, extending, what are the APIs, and so on and so forth. So uh, that's it from my session. Uh, uh, let's. Uh, so, how do you include libraries in Python? Uh, interesting uh, question. So, if you have. Um, so if you uh, there's something called as an import statement. Um, if you if I'll just uh, show it here. <clears throat> so there's a, you can go read it. What is known as an import statement. So what import statement does is import statement gets you the all the libraries. So uh, whatever library you're interested, whatever file or the module you're interested whose functionalities you require, you can just get it by using an import statement. You can go read about it uh, in, in the uh, in your uh, document. You just type import statement Python. Just go import statement Python. Import how to import statement. Yeah, so I mean, uh, these are the things that you should go and yourself do it. Like there's nothing like you need to ask me everything. There's, there, I just gave you the basics of Python, that statements and functions. Now you have to go and Google a lot of stuff. You have to try things hands on. Google it out, Google it out. Just Google and just find answers to whatever uh, problems you're facing with Python. Uh, and uh, so that's the answer to the next one. How do you include libraries? Just Google what import, it, import does. Any more questions or uh, should we just uh, start with a Git session now? OK, I think um, uh, let's just start with a Git session now. Uh, I'm not seeing any more questions. Uh, yeah, thank you, Pavan. That was an excellent uh, demonstration. So if you guys have any doubt uh, in Python, just uh, type it in the chat. Pavan will be online and he will be answering in the chat. So, yes, uh, you should just make a mention about uh, uh, or Pavan should just make a mention about Jupyter. Jupyter notebooks are like so convenient if uh, when you are just uh, starting off with Python. Right, so uh, there's uh, Anaconda uh, and there's this Jupyter notebooks. Uh, so all these uh, are very specific to applications so that you're uh, developing. I think if you're more into data science, uh, 
uh, uh, people should just go and check out uh, Anaco uh, what is known as uh, Jupyter Notebooks and uh, your Anaconda packages. So they have all these libraries inbuilt, like SciPy, NumPy. You don't really need to go and install everything. Um, so I would say, like, uh, rather than worrying about the names of Jupyter, I mean, these are just a bunch of the uh, keywords you just keep in your mind. But I would say, like, uh, just go and if you're interested in developing, uh, uh, say, a biomedical application in Python, uh, you should just... Uh, uh, type in Google, like, okay, well, what are the interesting uh, 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 environments and uh, notebooks I can work on that's easy to, convenient to work on? Of course, Jupyter. Of course, as if you want, like, more like a uh, ID sort of, then you can use, like, PyCharm. So all these comes up with uh, um, uh, inbuilt uh, libraries and packages, uh, which makes... Uh, uh, learning much more fun. Uh, uh, but uh, the objective of uh, this workshop is to stress on the fundamentals, but I encourage the participants to uh, uh, go and uh, uh, research about uh, 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 about how to build in uh, applications using Python. That's when all, all these uh, uh, fun aspects come about, like uh, Jupyter and like uh, Anaconda and so on and so forth. Uh, SciPy and NumPy and all these stuff will just uh, uh, come, come into picture and makes total sense then. Um, uh, so I think uh, that's it from my side. Thank you, Pavan. Uh, so yeah, uh, it's 11.30 now. I'll take up mine another hour and finish it at 12.30. So can you guys see my screen? Uh, I guess you can see my screen. So uh, hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to Git Fundamentals. So uh, the first doubt uh, whoever comes to this particular uh, platform, the first doubt they get is whether it's Git or Git. It's Git. Keep in mind. Uh, so what we are going to do is uh, it is going to be a hands-on. So I want you to execute the commands as I do. So the first thing I want you to do is uh, like create a new folder. Create a new folder. Uh, name it as something and get into it. So uh, I want to do this now. Uh, once you do this, just raise your hand. So sorry, what did you say, Sandhamiran? Uh, I want participants to create a new folder, just a new folder, new directory or folder. Okay. okay. Uh, if you are new on Teams, uh, raise hand button is here, uh, like at the top. So, uh, um, Sendaman, you're going to go fully on the command line, is it? Yeah. Get in it and okay, okay. Guys, it's just to create a new folder. Okay, I hope you all created a new folder, so I'm gonna go ahead. Uh, so like I in the first place. Yeah. Uh, okay, fine. So. There is this, uh, like, uh, if you're familiar with GitHub, uh, like, uh, it was, uh, like, mentioned in the email that you should have a GitHub account. Uh, even if you don't have it, it's fine. So I'll post a link in uh, chat. So I want you to go to the particular uh, link. So what we're going to do is uh, use an existing repo repository. While you're doing this, uh, I'm going to give a brief introduction on Git. So I I'll give you time to do this. The first thing is why we are using Git. Uh, so Git is basically uh, mentioned as distributed version control system. 
So what is distributed version control system? And before that, the system that was in uh, like practice was centralized version control system. So this is what most of the people use. So they have a particular server. So if you have to work on a project, you just uh, pull from the server, work on that and uh, push it to, to it. So this was the thing uh, that was in practice before Git. What Git introduced was it uh, offered uh, like access to full, full directory full, for the full project files in the server. So here you just take one file, work on it and bring it back. But here you can uh, like uh, pull out the whole version history, the whole project and work on it and push it back and you can even collaborate between uh, two people. So the main advantage of this is uh, like uh, the first thing is it won't interrupt if there is any uh, technical issues. If here, if you if the central server is down, you can't like your whole whole project uh, will be stopped for a particular time. But here it is it doesn't matter since each have a whole copy of the whole uh, project file, they can uh, work without any interruptions. That was one of the uh, like important things that made Git uh, Git popular. And uh, by with saying this, I want to uh, like mention this. Git is not just for software software developers. Git is for everyone. Like there is a, there is a like common misconception that uh, Git uh, software developers only use Git. But uh, even in scientific side, we can uh, like effectively use Git, and I'll tell you why. So there are three main reasons why academics should uh, use Git. The first thing is commit logs. I'll come to com uh, what commit commit logs are. It is basically a history like uh, thing. Uh, you will see what you did uh, at each step of a project. So uh, a common example is if you are if you are taking a break from a particular project and if you are coming to a project after a uh, particular amount of time, uh, you will forget what we did. Like uh, the all these codes and all this data will be uh, completely new to us. So Git commit logs give us an idea of what what are the changes we made and what are the steps we done in the uh, in to our project, so that uh, we can go through this and start from where we left. And the second thing second thing is uh, it safeguards against short term loss. Uh, even if you uh, like delete the whole directory, there are options uh, in Git to uh, pick up from where you left and like uh, revert all the changes you made. And uh, we use something called remote repo repository uh, in which we push our changes, push up all the files to a remote repository. Here I am using Git, GitHub. So using those kinds of uh, like remote repositories will uh, like will be so will serve as a backup to our data. The third thing is uh, enables collaboration. So uh, when we are writing a manuscript, uh, like we will be sending the first, we'll be sending uh, the draft to our friend to check for any uh, initial changes. Uh, he or she will uh, send us send it back to us, and like uh, we will will edit those changes and make it as version one, and we will send it to our PI, and we will get it back and uh, uh, like save it as version two. So. Uh, when we do, we have like eight to eight to nine versions of this uh, our manuscript, but we don't know what changes uh, we did in each version. So using Git can uh, like eradicate that kind of uh, confusions. So uh, yeah, I wanted to mention this. Git is not only for code files; it can uh, it can be used for any files, even for Word. You can use Git, uh, and people mostly use latex for their uh, manuscript and latex is very uh, it is very convenient for latex so we can use any type of files and track using it so yeah uh, we'll start with it i hope you all uh, like created a, a new directory so this was a this is a new directory uh, i created uh, if you are a linux or mac user just uh, right click on this and there will be open in terminal uh, in there and go with this. If you have Windows user, just uh, this is a Windows Explorer uh, like bar, location bar. Just click it and type uh, CMD. You will get the terminal. Okay. So uh, we mentioned in the guide installation guide that to ensure the complete installation of Git, you should uh, do this Git hyphen hyphen version. Here I'm getting the version, so it means the Git is properly installed. So uh, the next thing we have to do is set the configuration files. 
so why we have to set this so if you are doing uh, like uh, involved in a collaborating uh, collaboration project so each one each of the collaborator will be pushing the commits to the uh, repository so we have to know who pushed uh, uh, which changes like who did which changes so in order to do that we have to do this git config so i'm going to type here git config hyphen hyphen global user dot name and you have to give your name uh, i'll give my name and give enter it will be saved and again you have to change user dot email i'm going to give my email Uh, so I want everyone to like uh, execute with me so that uh, like you will get a practice of uh, how to use Git. So once you did this, uh, like uh, you can view the settings in Git hyphen hyphen list. If you do this, we have a list of configurations. Like uh, there are a lot of uh, like advanced configurations, but we did user.name, user.email, right? So it will be here, user.name and user.email. It will be both these things. So if you are given your name and email, you will get this. Uh, so uh, everything fine now. I want you to uh, like uh, execute with me. So if you have finished it, just uh, raise your hands. Or if you have any issues, just post it in the chat. I, uh, I will rectify it. So yeah, uh, you will be seeing a lot of uh, commands in this session. So if uh, sometimes the commands can confuse you, like you don't, uh, you you will remember the command, but you won't uh, know, you won't remember what it is used for. So uh, if you like say, for example, uh, get in it as a command. So if you type this command and do hyphen hyphen help, uh, it will open a page in your browser. Uh, it will have the manual page for the particular command. You have a git init command uh, and you have these arguments here and like this one line summary will tell you what it is, what the command is used for and we have a description on what other things. So we won't go into this, but uh, I, you have to remember this. Like if you don't know what the command is used for, you can use help or you can use even do this git help and just type the command. And it will in the same way open the page or the manual page. You will uh, get these details. So yeah, initializing Git for existing code. So there are two ways to initialize Git uh, in a repository. One thing is uh, Git in it. So I have this uh, like uh, folder with Python code. This is, this is just uh, the some of the lines like Pawan was teaching it. Uh, so if you have a, a code files in your directory, just uh, like open this in uh, like folder in terminal. You have this folder inside the Python workshop. Type git uh, init. Uh, init is uh, like short form for initialization. If you do this, you will get uh, like a folder called dot git. If you open this, there, there will be a lot of uh, files in here. This is the configuration file which has our uh, details. So we didn't uh, configure in this, uh, so we won't get the uh, username and email. So we can do this now. So open in terminal. Okay, config. So after doing this, if you go to the uh, config file, you will get this username as in those. So all this configuration we do here will be saved in as this configuration file. And we'll be having a lot of other files here, which is used for tracking. Uh, I'll, uh, as you go through this presentation, you will know what tracking means. So, uh, okay. So uh, you have this Python code. So what you can do is you, you did uh, git in it. This is one way of initializing a repository. If you go uh, like if you want to track these files, you have to add and commit. So I'll come to that later. 
so uh, but if you sometimes you want to uh, like clone from a remote repository say you have your friend has uh, all the codes in his github account so you want to uh, like take those codes and use it in our local system so what you can do is uh, i posted that uh, a link in the chat so if you go to the link you will get this uh, page uh, this is a dummy repository i created for uh, this workshop so you have these two files i explain what those files are so you have this fork here so if you click click fork you will get uh, if you have a github account you will get uh, this uh, Uh, repository here if you don't have a github account you uh, like you you won't have that fork option uh, i will tell you what what to do this is my uh, actual user thing so i click this a uh, forking is basically taking a repository that is from another person and just uh, like making a copy into your own profile so here uh, sendaman b is my own uh, profile so in my uh, profile i have this own copy of these two files so th that is basically what forking is for so once you have forked this we can uh, download this or clone this and use it uh, as it as it is if, if your files so once you have forked this you will get this uh, forked from a uh, cinnamon iit from where it is forked so uh, you have these two files the same files that we saw here you have this thing called code uh, when you click or click the code there will be a lot of options here so this is the uh, link for this repository uh, like send them and b which is the my profile name and git work workshop 2020 which, which is the name of the uh, repository repository is basically uh, a folder uh, we call it as a repository uh, when it comes to git and github so if you click this link uh, you will basically it is basically it basically copies this uh, url into clipboard click this and go to the new folder so i said there are two variations one variation is to uh, like do git in it if you are already code folders if you don't have any code folders but you have to take from uh, github profile just open a new folder and uh, go to terminal uh, you, you should do git clone git clone and if you right click on the terminal it will paste the thing i copied there and do the dot a uh, dot in linux terms is basically the current folder uh, windows adapted it to so dot basically means clone the contents of this particular uh, git uh, repository in this particular folder in the current directory this is the current directory which which we are in uh, you will see that it initialized with git automatically and it basically copied those two uh, files in there in our uh, local repository so basically git clone what what it does is it clones uh, a remote repository and makes a copy into a local system so that's what git clone does these are two ways to initialize uh, uh, git so next thing is git status uh, status gives us what at what uh, point we are in our git so yeah uh, windows users have this two options if you are uh, if you have enabled uh, environment variable during installation if you don't have it doesn't matter so go to uh, terminal and type git status so a branch is called main main is a default word uh, sometimes it's called master it depends on the uh, version a branch is updated which means we didn't uh, we pulled it from we cloned it from the uh, from the remote repository and we haven't made any changes so it cha it says nothing to commit working tree clean which means uh, there isn't uh, any changes we made to this so let's say uh, okay uh, i'm going to talk about uh, git ignore file here you have this git dot git ignore uh, file here so it is basically a type of a text file uh like uh linux or mac mac users can do this like if you go to the terminal uh, windows users can do this if you go to the terminal and do touch dot git ignore uh it will create an empty uh, file called git ignore so uh, linux and mac users can do this uh like windows users can can basically create a dot file uh in, particularly in windows 10 it is hard so that's why i uh, made a copy in the repository itself so in git ignore file there is uh, there is there are two lines hashtag 
in every programming language if a line starts with hashtag it is a comment so it doesn't mean anything so we have this uh, line called star.cs asterisk.csv so git ignore basically uh, tells the git to what um, what are the files should i ignore like uh, i shouldn't track this so uh, the getting not tells that uh, here we mention hashtag asterisk.csv which tells us that if there is a csv file in our directory just ignore that don't track it or don't uh, don't uh, say anything about uh, that to me so that's what this getting not file says so uh, okay so calc root is a python file which i just uh, made it for uh, this purpose so it's, it's very basic we have a function calculate square root it takes a number and returns the square root of the number square root is basically power half right so number power this uh, double asterisk symbol in python is power so number power 0.5 we have four we have uh, we are calling this function uh, by this four and we are returning to square root 2 so this is a very uh, basic code python uh, python file here so what we are going to do is we are going to make a change to this uh, file we are going to print so i just made a very small change here and saved it uh, save uh, but git actually tracks this uh, change so if you go to the folder and see git uh, status it will say that you have modified the calc root.py file you are changes so but uh, you have it you are ready to commit this commit is basically like uh, saving our changes so that's what commit uh, basically means so we, we want to know what change we did so we can do git diff so this shows that like uh, so there is no exact change we did but this is what the git reads it, it means i think some people don't have git installed so they saying that git is not a recognized internal or external command okay then i think they they, are, they haven't installed it so uh, we sent an installation guide prior Sorry? to the event uh, yeah they haven't installed it i guess yeah how, how how can you help them install it how what are the instructions you already shared that it is yeah is it? we sent a pdf or uh, like uh, like who haven't in installed the git can you raise your hand okay gautam uh gautam i guess you are using a uh, windows right uh type in the command so yeah i i will share the link Here, go to the go to the link, and uh, Windows will be here. If you uh, click on Windows, it will automatically uh, download the installer. So once it once it's downloaded, you can uh, like open the installer and uh, start installing. Have you did this, Gautam, already? okay yeah go with it uh so does anyone have any issues in the installation process like if if there is any just uh, tell uh, let me know in the chat so yeah uh, i was talking about git diff so it basically uh, tells us what are the changes we made so here it tells us that we like deleted this line introduced these two lines but it's not actually uh, what we did but uh, the uh, if cancel those two you will see you will see that we have uh, like included this print square root statement so the git diff basically tells us what are the changes we made okay so yeah so before actually saving these changes i wanted to talk about the uh, git workflow 
So there are three areas in Git workflow. Three, uh, yeah, three areas. The first thing is working directory. So the second thing is staging area, and the third is Git uh, directory or repository. So what uh, we are currently now in the working directory. Working directory is when we make a change to a file, a tracked file. We when we download it, when we clone the these two things, the we like the the dot git folder was there. So it means both of these files are already tracked. So we basically made a change to this uh, tracked file. So we are that means we are basically in the working directory. Working directory is when we make uh, changes to the file. Then we have to stage these uh, changes to the staging directory, and then we have to commit these changes. So uh, check out. I'll come to check out later. So there are three things. The first thing is uh, like we have we will will be uh, staging these changes. Uh, checking for changes uh, git diff and uh, staging area for staging uh, you have to use git add hyphen a uh, so when i do this git add so uh, add has a lot of arguments there hyphen a means you in uh, you uh, add all the files i have changed uh, in the to the staging area so before that if i do git status I have changed only one file. I have two files: this uh, calculate.py and git ignore. But I have changed only one file. So hyphen a includes that what one file. But here changes multiple files. Uh, you will like hyphen a includes all those files. So if you want to add only one file, you can do git add uh, calculate.py. So you added it, but how can you see it? So again, you if you go to Git status, now we can see uh, here it is in red, it is in green, which means here basically state stays these uh, changes we, that we made in the file. So basically, uh, green means the file is basically in the staging area. So if you want to uh, like remove the files from the staging area, we can do this Git uh, reset uh, file name. If you do Git uh, reset Alcro.py. It stay. It's. It tells us that uh, we have unsta unstaged changes. If you again do git status, again uh, the calculo will be in red, which means we have unstaged staged the changes that we did in uh, calculo.py. Okay. Yeah. I'll clear the screen. So we have made these changes. So we have to commit it first. We have before committing, we have to add. We have to basically uh, uh, like move the files to the st staging area. So git add hyphen a uh, since i hyphen a means all the files we have uh, made the changes in but uh, here we have only made changes in one file hyphen a includes that only one file do this and if you go git status you will see the uh, state the changes have been staged and the second the next thing you want to do is commit so you should, you should give git commit uh, hyphen m and a message. So the message is compulsory when during commit. Uh, like we can't commit uh, without uh, giving a message. A message is a one line summary of what are the changes we did uh, in the particular uh, at, at the particular point in our project. So uh, it should not be uh, very elaborate. It should not be very vague. It should be concise and uh, clear. So here, what I'm going to do is add it print statement. So this is a change change I made. So git commit uh, commits that and hyphen m uh, is basically an argument which shows says that added print statement is a message I'm going to uh, give to the, uh, this particular commit. So when I give execute this. Uh, so yeah, two insertion one one deletion. This is basically what we saw in git diff. So it's committed. Now you see git status. It says that nothing to commit working to clean. So uh, after ad adding the state changes, we we saw that it showed the changes to committed. After committing, there is no nothing to commit. So git status like uh, uh, says that at what point we are in our particular uh, uh, git workflow. So you have stages commit. So, sorry, you have committed the changes. So you want to see what are the uh, changes we have made so far. So you can uh, do that with uh, git log. So added files I upload is basically what I did in the GitHub uh, 
repository so the advantage of using git is it shows us the whole uh, process from the start beginning of the project till what uh, what is happening now so even if you came into the project at a, a later time you will have an idea of what what are what are the things they have done the others are done in the whole project so this uh, brings in transparency and clarity in the project which i believe is very important in uh, academics so these are two comments commits we did uh, to our repository we have added files we upload those are through two files uh, .git ignore and calc.py and we have added a print statement which we did now so these are the two things we have done so if you have a github account uh, you can do this so before that uh, you have to uh, check for remote repository remote repository is basically uh, a repository that is away from a local system where we are saving our uh, project files which is a remote so if you are working in a, a development uh, development team so a remote repository is where the all the files are so we will pull these files from there work on it and we will push it the so pull and push are the uh, technical terms that we use here so if you if you are cloned from the as as uh, as its own if you go to git remote hyphen v hyphen v is called verbos verbos uh, gives us all the information we have on a uh, remote uh, it says that uh, this is the url we have uh, fetched it from we have cloned it from so if you, if you're going to pull this changes to the remote repository we, we will be pulling this to uh, pulling the changes to this particular uh, directory or particular url so the first thing you have to do is pull so if you are working in a collaboration uh, you uh, say you cloned it from this particular repository but uh, between this time between uh, the time you cloned and the time you are pushing someone else would have uh, made some changes and pushed it so if uh, that means the files you have here will not be the same files uh, uh, in the github say i'll go to the thing here okay yeah so this is the file we uh, cloned from say i'm making some changes in, in here Uh, okay. Uh, it is the same changes. I doesn't. Uh, sorry, it doesn't um, matter if uh, the changes are same or not. Uh, like I did this print and I'm committing the changes. So GitHub basically is a, a GUI version of what we're doing here. Uh, when when I click the commit changes, it basically uh, added these files and uh, like committed this. If I go to code, so it shows that update calculated by 15 seconds ago, which means uh, uh, I pushed an another commit in the remote repository. So if I try to pull here, sorry, if I try to push here, uh, like it won't uh, accept. Okay, uh, I'm gonna talk about this. So this is the URL. There is an alias for the uh, URL, which is an alternative name, which is origin. Uh, we call our remote repository as origin. We can give, uh, we can uh, change the names, but the default name for our uh, uh, remote repository is called origin. So we are gonna, uh, we are using Git. We are gonna push this. Uh, we are gonna specify where we are here to push. We are to push to origin, and uh, we should uh, mention what we are gonna push. So here it is main because main is the name of the branch. I will uh, I'll come to branches later. So main is basically the name of the branch. And if I enter, it will throw me an error, I guess. Yeah, it will throw me an error. So what is basically saying is, uh, okay, yeah, like you may want to first integrate the remote changes. Uh, it says that someone has changed the remote repository. So first integrate that in your local system and then try to push. So without doing this, uh, it won't push. So what we what should what we should do is first we have to pull, git pull. So push is basically uh, pushing our changes here to the remote repository. Uh, pull is basically uh, pulling the changes that we did in the remote remote repository to our local system. So if you're gonna Put pull or git pull origin main. Yeah, 
yeah okay so basically we shouldn't have uh, done the same changes so yeah what uh, when you go to the file you, it is saying that both these changes are the uh, same so like it it asks us what what is the like out out of the two which you wish to uh, choose so uh i'm going to delete this like uh, this is a you uh, if you have a merge conflict you have to you will get this head and this hash here so this uh, arrows point out to which is the region in the code which uh, has a conflict so you have to uh, correct this particular region so uh, it, it it asks to choose from what the both of the print statement even though the statements are the same git does not recognize recognize it as same statement so what you going to do is like uh, just go to one uh we will just uh, keep one print statement and do this so yeah we have modified this file so we have to commit it if you have merge conflict it is basically called merge conflict when you when the when you pull it from a remote remote times it won't merge as smooth as we wish so we have changed this and we have added we have to add because we have the uh, calculus in the working directory we have to add merge conflicts i'm giving the commit as merge conflict i'm commit basically committing these changes and i am trying to push it now origin now it is writing so now it is not throwing an error now it is writing so uh, i gave this uh, thing as merge conflicts if you go to the github and reload this now it's still okay yeah yeah uh, it says that it is updated uh, 29 uh, seconds ago uh, the the message here does not change because uh, github actually recognizes that uh, we didn't make any change we just uh, like omitted one print statement but it, it is basically the same change but if we go to commits it will say that we have four commits it is the latest commit commit with merge conflict you, if you go to merge conflict you will see what the changes we made so we remove this and uh, add this so yeah uh, this is basically how you uh, like push it to a remote repository if you don't have a github account you can't do this uh, but uh, no if uh, you can uh, push and pull to the remote repository uh, so for any doubts uh prahala uh, you have to do git init or git clone uh, to basically get the dot git directory so yeah uh, we have pushed and pulled so common workflow during collaboration so if you are collaborating with uh, two or more people Uh, each one each of the collaborator will be doing uh, changes of their own uh, so git enables that one collaborator does not uh, affect the changes uh, that that was done by another collaborator so there are something called branches in git so what we are doing uh, what we have been working here is called uh, if you go to git branch it will be uh, shown the list of branches here what we are doing is main or sometimes called master master is the uh, main branch that uh, every changes once it's uh, approved will be merged to so master is the main branch if you are coming at a later part of the project uh, so if you want to add a new feature to it so say uh, like i have this file i have to uh, i will give a new function called uh, calculate square which takes the number and uh, uh, returns the square of the number so i'm basically working on this uh, 
feature. So I'm just making a new branch for myself. New branch is basically my copy, but the changes I commit will not affect the master branch. So I will basically make the make the changes, make the changes in my branch, and then I will merge it to the uh, master branch. Then uh, someone else comes at a very later part of the project, and they have they want to work for uh, newer another feature. So they will uh, pull up a branch, they will create a new branch, work on it, and then merge it. So this is how the basic uh, workflow is during a collaboration. So yeah, so basically I want to. Uh, add a new feature so i want to add the square function to my code so i will create a new branch and then uh, make the changes in my branch so what i'm going to do is okay first i'll uh, uh, create this because i want to work uh, add this uh, square function in the new branch so uh, for to create a new branch you can give git branch uh, say square if you do git branch again you will get this two uh, list of branches we just had main now we created a branch called square uh, the square square branch is created but still the access is in the main branch so you have to change the access from main to square branch so uh, we have to do git check out square. So it says it's switched to branch square. Now you do uh, git branch. Now the green is in square. So which means the, the any changes we make now, it is basically it goes to the square. So now I can uh, okay. make these changes here. Okay, I, I'll save these changes. So if I do git status, it will say that the calculate pi has been modified. And if I do git, git diff, it will show what are the changes. It showed that I added these two lines. So, uh, uh, okay, I have to show the effect. If you go to uh, say, see there is this two lines here, the calculate square. If I go to the main branch, git checkout main. Checkout is the command that we have that we use to uh, uh, shift the access. Checkout main. It showed switch to main, and uh, okay, it, it doesn't change. Did I commit? Okay, I am not sure. Okay, sorry, I didn't uh, save the delete, fine. So if I delete this and save, and uh, I didn't commit the changes. my funny. What I'm going, what I'm doing is basically I, uh, I didn't, uh, I forgot to commit the changes after uh, adding it. So I will delete this and again commit it in the main branch. So you don't have the square uh, square function here. So if I go to uh, square, okay, it's not updating in the correct thing. Okay, uh, so it's not working here. So basically, what it does is, it what it does is it, the two lines that we changed uh, will that we deleted will come here. So it, the file is the same thing, but uh, Git tracks this file, so it it tracks the changes that we did uh, between the branches. So uh, if we if it switches branches, it will show the uh, the uh, changes that we uh, did in the particular branch. So we are in this branch. Go to git log. Yeah, like there is no commit here. Okay, I again oh, forgot to commit. So the mistake I made here was before checking it to main, 
I didn't commit the changes in the square function. So if you didn't commit the changes in the square branch, and then uh, without committing it, if you uh, like move branches, the changes you made will be uh, will be gone. So you have to keep in mind. So I made a different branch. Uh, what branch I mean? I'm in square. Okay. Uh, made this change. Uh, it says that the uh, calculator is not modified not uh, committed i do get add hyphen a get commit hyphen m of uh, added square okay fine say that uh, one file has changed okay, log. So yeah, we added the square root function here. And then, uh, so uh, in development team, if we create a new feature, sometimes it might cause issues, but uh, if it doesn't cause issues, if the feature is fine, it is approved. We have to merge the feature to our uh, main function, main main branch. So what we are going to do is we have this uh, added square in our uh, square branch. So we have to merge this uh, square thing, uh, like square function in our main branch. So I am going to go to main. So yeah, uh, so I am, I shifted to main. It, it is saying that the file has been modified. So if I get, click yes, this thing will be gone because I'm in a uh, main branch. I didn't make any changes in the main branch. So that, uh, uh, that function is gone here. So I'm in main branch now. So I have to check out uh, master on main branch and I, I should do this git merge the branch name. So if I do git merge, the branch name is square. So basically main uh, master is the uh, master branch. The git recognizes it as a main branch. So if you just give merge, it will merge the this branch to the main branch. It, say, it said it merged. So again, if uh, there is no uh, function here, but since we merged it, uh, if you want to reload it, the function will be here. So basically we merged the changes that we made in the square uh, branch to our main branch. So this is a merge works. So once merged, we can uh, push these changes to the uh, remote repository. Did push. Uh, there is an argument called hyphen u origin master. Uh, hyphen u is basically setting upstream. So once you did this with, with uh, once you did a, a git push hyphen u origin master, after that you don't have to mention origin and master. Uh, hyphen u basically says that associate these commits with the remote repository origin master there. So associate yourself, I don't have, I, I won't be typing it anymore. So after doing this once with hyphen u, you can just uh, give a git push and it will automatically uh, add the origin and main uh, itself. So added the square function, I am I am pushing it to the remote repository. Uh, after pushing this, if I go and see in the GitHub, uh, it will be changed. The we can see the square function here. No reload. Yeah, you can see the added square here. If you go uh, to the, if you open the thing, you can see the uh, calculate square. Okay, it should be square. So you can see the new function here. So this is how you create a branch. Uh, you create a branch and check out it, make the changes here and merge it with the master. Once it's approved, once it's fine, uh, if it does not uh, throw any errors, you can just merge it with the master. And since, uh, we are done with the square branch. We have merged it with the master. We can delete the branch. Uh, first, if uh, if you go to here, git branch, you have, you have two uh, different branches, main and square. We don't have the square branch anymore. You can just work with the main branch. So you can do git branch hyphen D, the branch name. Branch hyphen D, square. 
created branch square. So if you do get branch, it won't be there anymore. So this is how create a branch and uh, work on it and merge and uh, uh, like delete the branch afterwards. It's 12.15. I have a uh, fixing common mistake. So I will just uh, I'll just uh, speed up through this. So git checkout file name. So basically if you if you have made some changes but you decided you don't have you don't want any changes that you made you can just uh, do git checkout so uh, i have this calculate i have i have this program i'm gonna make some changes i'm gonna uh, copy and paste this print square print 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 i'm gonna i paste it three times i saved it so if i don't want any changes uh, uh, all these changes are that i made what I what can I do is git checkout of calc root dot by. If I do this and go here, all these changes will be gone. So git checkout is basically uh, a way to uh, undoing all the changes in the tax file. So if you have uh, like did a lot of work in uh, multiple uh, program files, you, you can like go and search for every change that you made. So using git checkout will git checkout will uh, Undo all these things, but it happens only to attract the file. If you already committed the file, you can use git uh, git checkout. If, if you haven't tracked the file, if you haven't moved the file from the staging area uh, once, uh, you can't use git checkout. And the next thing is updating the commit message. Uh, sometimes uh, we will uh, misspell or uh, like uh, give another. Uh, some other commit message. Commit message, commit logs are very important. So if you are going to show a project to someone, if you are going to ask someone to collaborate, they have to know what are the what are the things you are done, right? So if the commit message uh, is not proper, they won't be able to uh, understand your whole project. So uh, if, if I will go to git log. Uh, I have this added square square here but uh, it doesn't mention like what is a square if it is it, is, it, is it a function or just a square drawing or something like that so you have to change this message so what i can do is git commit hyphen hyphen amend hyphen m i uh, i can give the new message here added square function if i do this so the like uh, advantage of doing this is it won't create another new commit here. So basically commits are basically files that we will write in the git uh, dot git directory. Uh, if we are gonna like uh, do a multiple commits, the file size will be large and pushing it will be uh, difficult. So without creating a new commit, uh, it will just modify the same thing. Uh, same commit, just modify this uh, uh, message. If I do this and do the git log, so add a, uh, uh, here after merge config you have added square, but here after merge config you have added square function. So basically the uh, the commit message has been changed without uh, introducing a, uh, another commit. So transferring commit within branches, in commits again. So I'll talk about this uh, and I'll give some links so in which you can uh, like look at this, so these take a long time. I've already spent a lot of time here. Git clean dot df uh, hyphen df. So yeah, so I have I am tracking these two files. So accidentally, if I uh, added a lot of files here, so uh, I'm just creating a dummy text file here. It isn't tracked. It doesn't. Uh, Git does not know the this file is here. Right? I'm going to copy and paste it multiple times. Uh, I made a lot of copy here, but uh, we don't want this copy. If you accidentally like uh, in, uh, like uh, added a lot of these uh, such files here, we can't like uh, go and delete everyone if you want to remove from our uh, directory. So what we can do is uh, go to git clean hyphen df. D is basically uh, just git clean uh, cleans these files uh, hyphen df. Uh, D is uh, um, like short for directory. So if I just uh, give hyphen clean, it won't uh, clear the new directories, new folders I have uh, mentioned. So we are giving hyphen DF anyway. Uh, 
uh, even though we are not uh, having any uh, directives that we want to clear and f is for force like uh, if you don't give f it will ask uh, like it will prompt for the delete yes or no for every file so if you give f it will force the uh, git to clean every file so if i give this it will remove all these files and all these files click on so if you uh, if you accidentally like uh, zip uh, unzipped a folder here or accidentally pasted a lot of files here you can use git clean uh, to remove those files so there are another uh, like two uh, two topics uh, there like transferring commits between branches and uh, reverting commits uh, transferring commits is basically if uh, say uh, like I pulled the ma master branch, but uh, without uh, like making a new branch, uh, I have been working in the master branch itself. So if you want to uh, transfer the commit, the changes I did in master branch to a new branch, what what I can do? The revert commits is once we change the thing from master to master branch to a new branch, I have to uh, like revert the commits in the master branch, right? So what we can do to revert those changes? So those are things. Uh, that are covered here, but I'll give you links since we are, are running out of time. Uh, these are the three uh, uh, sites that I recommend to uh, uh, look at. So these have a lot of Git SEM is the official documentation for Git and Atlassian.com has a lot of uh, tutorials and uh, explanation for Git and try out github.io is also has a lot of uh, like uh, resources to learn Git. And that's a wrap. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, yes, Gautam, I'll share the PDF after the session. Uh, Tamil, we don't have any uh, particular type of lang program language. Even uh, like we don't even the files don't even have to be a program language. It will the Git will track any type of file. All the program pro programming files, all the text files. Like it will attack uh, even the word files. We, we, like uh, when using word files, we can't use git diff because uh, it git diff only shows in binary files, but we can uh, git can track. So it doesn't have to be a particular programming language. So uh, does anyone have any other question? Of how does the owner of the code check? Okay, so when you are uh, like pushing the changes, it won't uh, like allow allow you to push to any GitHub. So you have to basically have access to the particular GitHub. If the owner, uh, so if you want to give uh, like push it push the changes to another repository uh, which uh, you are not a part of it, there is basically something called uh, pull requests so you can like put forth the changes that you have made to the owner and the owner can decide uh, if they can approve these changes or not so it is called pull requests we can't just push to any remote repository we can only push to the remote remote repository that we have access to so in this uh, thing i have this is my profile so i have access to this particular uh, profile so I can push it to this. Uh, okay, so I'll give an example. I have uh, IBSC here. Uh, if I want to, if I, if I have to share to IBSC remote repository, it will show, show me that the permission is denied. So I can push it to any repository. Any other questions? Okay, I got asked, have you learned uh, something in this workshop? So if you have learned anything, if you found this work workshop useful, just raise your hand. No one? Okay, fine. And we had some uh, maintenance issues, technical issues at the beginning. Uh, 
we apologize for that and um, thank you for your patience. Uh, I think if we don't have any questions, we can wrap up. We can end this event. If you have any questions, uh, like I think Philji has contacted you, uh, so you can send it to Philji or you can send it to me or Pavan. And I think uh, I will I will ask Philji to make the PDF available. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining.